Good morning, Internet, YouTube. What's going on? Welcome back to The Shimmy Show. I'm on the highway right now, coming back from our Canada road trip. Just seeing my kids and whatnot. And I'm actually, uh... I'm in traffic, and I'm stuck behind a fucking, uh... snowplow or some shit. And I have no cell signal, so... Remote part of the country, I thought I'd do an audio show. Or a fucking, uh... YouTube episode or whatever. Uh, today's topic I'm talking about is, uh... A few things about uh, making peace with your uh, baby mama and exes and whatnot, ex-wife, ex-baby mama, etc., those of you that have them out there. It's a good thing. For those of you guys that don't know, I do talk a lot of shit about, you know, men, women, relationships, dating, marriage, sex, all that shit. For those of you that don't know, I was married at a very young age, age 19, I believe, back in the year 2000, and this was 18 years ago. I was married for, I believe, six and a half or seven years. And uh, like any other relationship, it's ups and downs and breakups and shit are fucking chaotic. But I just want to let you guys know that time does change things as long as everybody's still alive and present to uh, account for. I I don't foster any hatred or any jealousy, envy, problem, problems or anything like that towards, uh, towards my ex or anything like that. And we're actually on very cool speaking terms nowadays. It's, it's really good and healthy to make peace with uh, all these things in your life or whatever. So as, as I drive behind this snowplow and I'm headed back to the... Gotta go around these fucking cars here. Hold on. There we go. As we... Uh, as I drive this motherfucking rental car back to the airport here before I go home... Just stop and uh, think, those of you guys that have been through some really rough and tough breakups, a lot of guys that I read on the uh, Reddit forums and whatnot, we share the same story. You know, you had a lot of money, you had a house, typical married man story. Uh, If you were married, chances are you shared a house with your woman. And chances are when you got divorced or broke up, you lost it or shit got foreclosed by the bank or some shit like that. And you lost everything and had to start over again from a clean slate. I'm no different. And oftentimes it'll take you a motherfucking decade or more to basically get your marbles together, fucking rebuild your fucking credit, get get a new job, new life, travel, and more or less find yourself in all that bullshit. But even throughout that process, it's difficult and it's hard to not be bitter and cynical because you, you basically you're a shell of a man and you've been broken, you know, and that, that's the situation that I've been in and that's what I've been reading from a lot of guys, and I I just write them back on the forums or whatever and say, hey man, you'll get your shit together, just, you know, spend some time alone in isolation, rebuild yourself, and learn a lesson from all this shit or whatever. And ever since my breakup, I actually haven't really engaged in any, uh, like, serious relationships. I've always, I've been, like, super duper fucking cautious, and, and I think that's a good thing or whatever. Because, you know, it's like once you've been burned, you learn how things operate or whatever. And I I spend, like, still to this day, I spend, like, hours of my day playing back psychology and reading, you know, Reddits and reading books. I'm currently reading Nietzsche and shit like that currently or whatever. And I still have the desire to understand where basically where I fucked up, where she fucked up, where society fucked up and why things are the way they are. But in the process of doing this, it's important that you don't become, like, all bitter and all fuck this, fuck that, and whatever once you've gone through the rage phase. If you haven't gone through the rage phase yet, then chances are you, you're just, you know, you're, you're biding your time or whatever. But it's, it's a necessary part of the process as far as uh, maturing yourself and just becoming a better person, I think. So with that said, whatever, I'm driving home right now. I still I still process shit all the time, this and that and the other, but... After all these years have passed or whatever, I feel good that we can finally, uh, you know, we can talk civilly, we're at peace, we're fucking, you know, we're co-parenting, all that bullshit and whatever, but time does change things. And you will find that throughout all the bullshit, all the gaslighting, all the, uh, all the fuckery and all the shit that I might have talked about on my other videos and books and shit here, here and there and the other, time has a tendency... I wouldn't say to heal your wounds or pains or whatever, but 
it seems like it, it's, it's your brain's automatic response to try to delete or block out some of the most traumatic parts of your uh, past, especially if they're over 10 years old or whatever or whatever, you know, I don't, I don't really hold on to fucking grudges and shit like that unless the case is some motherfucker has been like uh, involved in some skullduggery and fuckery from the get-go, you know, on the entrapment tip and whatever. Anybody that wants to put you under the ground or see you locked up or has some kind of fucking entrapment shit up their sleeve from day one, fuck them. They can eat shit and die. And you guys know who I'm talking about. You're probably listening to this right now. Still, fuck you people, for real. But as far as, like, people you've actually had relationships with and uh, grown with, people you've had kids with and this and that, it's important that you eventually make some peace with them, you know? I can speak of my own parents to this day. To this day, I think my dad's gotten over this shit a long time ago, but my mom's, you know, she still won't take a picture or they'll be uncomfortable in the same room with my dad. And my grandparents were the same way. I am not that way, you know? Despite whatever, I've been married longer than, <laughs> six or seven times longer than my parents or whatever. I've lost six, seven figures, I don't know how many times over, and I'm still not bitter because I realize, like, hey, you know what? Some people are just following a program, and some people are immature, and people do grow and evolve over time, some people. But even if they don't, it's, you got to take it upon yourself to grow up and realize, like, oh, okay, well, they were on that shit, so that's why things are the way they are. I'm not making excuses, by the way, for, for, uh, for my ex-wife and this and that or whatever. I'm definitely not doing that, but I am seeking understanding, and I often try to put myself in other people's shoes and whatever to see what adds up and what doesn't and whatever. Still a little pissy about some shit, but, I mean, like I said, do you really remember... You know, your car that broke down 10 years ago, vividly. You know, do you remember the last time you blew a head gasket in fucking 1999 on a fucking Honda or some shit like that? Like, really, like, 20 years later, the shit doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. So, yeah, man, that's that. So, uh, I, ha I do have a topic here since I'm still out of uh, cell phone signal range up here in the mountains and shit. Let me look here and see what I was going to talk about. Uh... Okay, this was something that was on Reddit the other day. I'm going to quote, quote, unquote, this is from a post here. Uh, it's actually about uh, men and male, male, what they call it? I was about to say mailman. It's, a, it's about male suicide and men who kill themselves. This guy, this guy wrote a reply to this thread here saying, uh, can you blame them, them being men? Uh, only, quote, this is quote, unquote, by the way. I'm not reading this from, from my own head. It says, quote, unquote, only women, children, and dogs are loved unconditionally, whereas a man is loved under the condition that he can provide something. And this guy was replying to some guy saying, like, you know, why do, why do guys fucking off themselves and this and that? And it's because, literally, because women do not love men, for the most part. Now, I want to add a little point to this, okay? I do, I do somewhat agree with this, by the way. But you have to look at things from the frame that... Uh, if a woman already has her own resources and she's pretty much fairly semi-comfortable, I actually believe it's possible for her to love her man or whatever. Now, if a woman is devoid of resources or whatever, she's going to seek them out. If she's not going to work for themselves, she's going to try to probably seek them out or whatever from some other dude or whatever. And I kind of understand the logic to a degree. I don't like it, but I, I at least can kind of compute it or whatever in my head. Um, there was another, uh, what's the, what do you call it, subreddit, something on the tree or whatever. The, ne the next post on here says, uh, quote unquote, so a woman doesn't love you, she loves your resources, and you, the man, don't love a woman. In fact, you love yourself. You love the person you become around her. Ain't that the truth? She is a mirror, and she shows you at your best, quote unquote. And this goes on for a couple of uh, fucking paragraphs or whatever. So basically what I'm getting at is, uh, dudes, you gotta love yourself. You gotta take care of yourself even more. And you won't be always uh, like, oh, I gotta get a girlfriend, I gotta get a wife, or girls don't like me, and this, that, and the other. 
the love that, and I'm talking about this from a guy's point of view here, when a guy sees a hot chick, when I see a hot chick, I'm actually not loving her. I might, I might be thinking about her, I might be thinking about being with her companionship, fucking her, this, that, and the other, but in actuality, it's really more of a reflection of me being selfish and, uh, you know, like wanting her, wanting her time for me, basically. The inverse of this is the women wanting you for your resources or whatever, so I don't agree with any of this, but it seems like it's nature, it's biology, and that's kind of is just the, the way shit is or whatever, but from my observations through, through uh, this life right now, once a woman has her own resources and she's set in her own mind or whatever, I do think she's going to be very, very honest with you. And, and I have often been finding lately that girls, 30 plus or whatever, they tend to be brutally, brutally honest with me, whereas they may be uh, on some manipulation type of shit with their actual partner or whatever. And I've, I've just observed this in a couple of different scenarios or whatever. Um, another, another popular Reddit quote, Reddit, Reddit quote that I read is that a, a woman will be, you know, totally 100% honest with everybody except for the man that she's trying to manipulate or whatever. Ain't that the motherfucking truth or whatever. You, you, can, you, you know, you can look at this uh, with uh, hookers, strippers, prostitutes, porn stars, every, every girl in every other category. I, I, I'm using sex workers as an example here because if you look at it from the frame that if a girl is a sex worker and you're paying her, she's already got what she wants from you. A hooker will be honest with you because she has, as long as you're paying her or whatever, she's going to be honest with you because she has nothing else to gain from the transaction by manipulating you unless you're one of the kind of guys that's easily manipulated by hookers. And I've been in that position too. But realistically... Once she's got what she wants from you, there's, she has no reason to be an actress around you. So I'm saying to you guys, if you want the brutal, brutal truth for what a woman or women collectively maybe think about you, go ahead and ask a stripper, ask a hooker, ask a porn star, ask them. Because she's already got men in her life for resources, or she makes her own resources, so she has no reason logically to juice you unless you're like an experiment or something or a plaything in her mind or whatever. So, uh, yeah, man, that, that's, that's some real honest-to-goodness, true feedback. I think that's often the reason why. I think that's why I'm friends or why I get along with uh, sex workers, hookers, and porn stars and shit so well. Massage girls and whatnot, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because after the transaction is done or whatever, it's like, I've got me a buddy. i got someone that I can confide in and vice versa because we're not trying to, uh, you know cross manipulate one another for shit all very good observations or whatever so back to my original topic though a lot a lot of people a lot of guys on this reddit forum called MGTOW and a lot of uh other shit that i read youtube channels and whatnot they're saying shit like oh i'm never going to be with a woman ever again i've given up on women quote unquote this and that and i'm not in that boat i love massages i love fucking i love pussy i'm a guy it's my biology etc. I'm not, I'm never, probably never, ever, ever giving up on women. You know, I'm just an addict, whatever. I do have control over my impulses and desires, but I can never, I don't think that I could ever shake that shit fully. Nope, 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 not gonna happen. <laughs> but a lot, of, a lot of guys have gone to the extreme. They call this shit monk mode, quote unquote, where they're like, you know, some motherfucker will go live in a cabin in the woods or whatever and totally isolate themselves and do all that shit, and I'm like, damn, dog, you guys, that's exactly what the fucking Unabomber did, you don't want to do that, you know, I, <laughs> I like to hear women's voices, I like to get massages, I like to, uh, just hear women laughing, it's comforting to me, you know, if you guys don't like it, fuck it, it is what it is, or whatever, I'm not a, I'm not a total motherfucking, uh, as people say, you're either a pimp, simp, alpha, or a beta, a lot of people are out there saying, like, oh, I'm going to be the alpha male now. I'm tired of being a beta male. I'm tired of being picked on or uh, cucked or this and that. Pimp, simp, alpha, or beta. I'll choose the pimp role. <laughs> okay. I've been the simp. I've been known to trick off with girls before. I don't think that I've ever been an alpha male because I'm a short motherfucker with no muscles and this and that. 
I'm black, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I actually think if you're a black man in the United States of America, it's almost impossible to be, impossible to be an alpha male because uh, people who run shit don't look like you. People who control the vast bulk majority of resources don't look like you. So you can never, ever truly, truly be an alpha. Even if you do shit like me and run your own business and this and that and the other, so the fuck what, your governor, president, etc., etc., lawmakers, law enforcement are generally white men. Maybe you can be an alpha male in another country, maybe, but definitely not United States of America. So uh, screw being an alpha. Definitely screw being a beta. <laughs> you know? And definitely screw being a motherfucking simp. Once you know better and once you study and read books and learn psychology and have life experience, you'll never be a simp again. You'll never be victimized by women again. You'll never be taken advantage of. So that only leaves one logical thing for me to be. The P.I. <laughs> M.P. The E-Pimp. Shimmy, shimmy, Macbeb, shimmy, Macbeb. That's me. So it is what it is. Pimps love hoes. You know? I love hoes. I don't know about you guys. So... And actually, a lot of times, pimps get a lot of hate from regular beta male simps and alpha males. Men have a lot of motherfucking infighting going on amongst one another. You know, they, 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 they don't like pimps. You know, you got a lot of niggas that write me. I look on my uh, channels and this and that for the comments. They don't like me. No, 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 no. I read it. They, they hate my guts. Why? Because they're either alphas, betas, or simps. They're not PIMPs. It is what it is, man. Live your life and do what you're going to do. But realistically, you got to choose one of those four positions. Pimp, simp, alpha, beta. Make your bed and uh, sleep in it. There really is no gray area. And throughout your course of your life, you might jockey back and forth through those various positions. But I think I found the uh, position that I'm the most comfortable in. You know? And being any of these doesn't mean that you have to forsake relationships... It doesn't mean that you have to be, uh, you know, used as a fucking resource battery all the goddamn time. The important thing is that you just know better and that you're aware of what the fuck's going on. And that you're following your own narrative and your own script and not somebody else's. Then your brain won't get fucking programmed and hacked or hijacked or whatever. It's just as easy for someone to program and hijack your brain with whatever philosophy or ideology or whatever... Just the same as a woman can come into your life and you can start seeing the world through her eyes or whatever. So it's important that you think for yourself and realize what's the most comfortable option for you and pick and choose your battles or whatever, you know? Not everybody in the world can be an alpha male. Not everybody can be a beta. Almost anybody can be a fucking simp. I think simp is like default role for most American men, actually. But definitely a very, very, very small minority can think like a pimp. I'm not saying that even pimp is a good thing, but it is what it is, man. Look at my history and you'll uh, see whatever the fuck I line up with or whatever. Like it, love it, or hate it or whatever is what it is. But all right, that's all I wanted to talk about here. I'm almost back in uh, back in cell phone bar range. I got one bar here, so I'm going to put on YouTube or whatever, and I'll upload all this shit when I get back home. For all you guys that are doing your own thing, going your own way, best of luck to you. Keep reading, keep educating yourself. Do your best to get some library books or YouTube psychology under your belt, and you'll see uh, see the world for what it is, man. Get your passport and travel and expand your mind, you know. And remember, I always say your chances are you're not going to be with the same girl all your goddamn life. Realize that. Either she's going to move on, or than likely or you're going to move on, or circumstances are going to change. So uh, just remember, nothing is concrete or cement. Live life day by day and enjoy it, and take care of yourself. Above all, take care of your fucking health, and none of this philosophy, psychology shit ain't going to matter if your blood pressure is zero over zero. <laughs> you know, so make sure you work out, take your fucking vitamins, eat healthy, and all this and that. Make that the priority. Then you can start arguing on your motherfucking... Uh, computer chair and this and that about which philosophy is the best and which is the best way to go and all this and that. This is Shemmy from Shemmy Show signing out. Buy my movies and want your money, honey. Peace and hair grease. I'm out of here. Later. How do I pause or stop this now? I'm pretty you to using, using phone and apps and shit. Okay, here we go. Pause, stop.
Hey, hey, what's up, people? It's Jimmy. Story time. Story time. A uh, couple topics I could fuck with today. Tonight, I should say. I like to spill my brain out before I go to sleep at times, you know. Uh, all right. A lot of you guys might wonder why I don't have a wife or girlfriend. Okay. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I sometimes wonder that myself until I go and replay a few scenarios in my head, right? And for those of you guys who don't know, I'm a runner, long-distance runner. It's a trait of East Africans, you know? It's what we do. So I run every day, every day of my life, just about. I mean, there was like a stretch for a handful of years back when I was married where I quit running and got fat as fuck. But pretty much since age 15, I've gone running every single fucking day, like, at least 10k a day at least, right? So it's a part of my routine, right? Not changing, still doing it. So, get this, when I got married, my ex-wife at the time did not run. I was not aware of the fact that she could not run because, you know, I got married pretty young. I was, I believe, uh, 19 or so, and she couldn't have been more than 20, 23 maybe, 24, I don't know, early 20s anyway. So I'm thinking that any normal, able-bodied adult should be able to run. You know, I've never heard of anybody who can't run. You know, if they, well, the truth, truth of the matter is everyone can if they try. You know, all right, anyway. But anyway, my point is I chose a partner whose hobbies did not co- I don't know if you call them hobbies, but uh, my hobby and passion that's very dear to me, running, uh, she was not compatible with it and could not participate, you know? I think at some point I bought her a bicycle and tried to get her to like, you know, just ride the bike with me while I run. And that only worked for like two times or two days till some fucking Puerto Rican kids stole the bicycle out of the garage. But that's another story, you know. But uh, yeah, man, anyway, I haven't, I didn't, I didn't have a running partner. I've never had a fucking running partner. How about that? Not since the fucking high school days and shit. So that didn't matter. I'm still running. Let me, let me continue with this story, right? So, back in the fucking late 90s or whatever, dial-up internet days. Ah, fuck. All right, I'm thinking about this here. She, the ex-wife, she, we're still dating and shit for a couple months or whatever. She moves in with me. And I remember on the first or second night, probably the first night I woke up since I run every night, I wake up to go and get on my shoes, so I don't wear shoes in the house, and I have, like, all my running shoes by the door. I've got a couple pairs, you know, I'm like that for different terrain, weather, all that shit. So uh, I see the shoes, but I'm not seeing my socks, my running socks. And for those of you who are not runners, I'm going to tell you, man, this is why this shit's important here, right? I buy special socks, either Thorlows or Wigwams, and these motherfuckers are, like, special order most of the time, and they're, like, $17 a pair, right? And they look just like normal fucking socks, right? But they're made out of like Cool Max and a bunch of other wick wicking material or whatever so that when I run, my feet stay dry, don't sweat, and you know, you got better traction, friction in the shoe. It's, it's highly technical and if you ever get involved in any sport, especially any racing, competitive type of sport, you know, you get all, you know all this shit or anyway, right? So my point is, with her not being a runner, She's not going to know that these are my, like, special running or even... I actually have racing socks, believe it or not. There is such a thing. So, yeah, she, she uh, tells me, Oh, I threw out those old socks. Those old... Uh, those socks were all crispy and crunchy like fucking a paper bag or some shit or something, she says, right? She threw them out. This should have been a red flag, and it was a red flag. And uh, it's, to this day, it's something that I wonder why I let slide or whatever. But I'm like, of course, I'm like, oh, fuck, you threw my socks out? Fuck, those are, they're supposed to be like that. The reason they look dry and crispy, crunchy is because I bought them to be that way for, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. So my point is in saying all this, I had to buy some more socks, yeah. My point in saying all this is that if you're with a partner, girlfriend, wife, and she has no, I, no fucking idea, like not even 0%, of your hobby that you're mostly passionate about, 
man, that's pretty bad. You know, it's, uh, it makes you wonder why, why are you investing with this person? You know, because like anybody who's a runner, if you go and do, do like I do, I, I, I calculated I spend about four hours a day on just a, just a running and hit cardio. Okay. Running is like when you're a runner or a racer or whatever, it's like a religious fucking routine. I don't just wake up, put on my shoes, and run out the door. I take like an hour to prepare, you know, to get ready to go run, to, to get dressed and suited up, take my vitamins and all this shit, get my music ready, all my clothes are laid out and all that shit in the night. It's what runners do. And I got to go out at a specific time every day. And, you know, after the fact, after the hour or whatever, plus or two hour, whatever the fuck the run, the run is, I got to get back, refuel, take my fucking... Uh, protein, all this shit, more vitamins, you know, dip in the hot tub, you know, for my muscles and shit, for the legs, then I got to eat and then have a nap. And anybody who's not a runner does not understand this. You cannot just go out and redline your body for two fucking hours, come back in here, jump in the shower, and then think you're going to like put on a fucking suit and tie and go to work or something. Your body needs to like rest and recover. You know, I, I, I can't drive, I can't do shit or whatever. So, if you're not a runner, you don't know about the post-run nap. The runners do. It's the cool-down phase and all that shit. And uh, I think that's the reason I don't have a girlfriend or wife today. Because she's not a runner and she doesn't fucking understand the routine or the process or the time that I put into doing what I consider to be my hobby. Yeah, man. So I would really say for like the best... Uh, possible life matches life choices or whatever you should find somebody that's at least half-assed interested in uh, whatever the fuck you know you, you spend a large portion of your day doing this is most uh yeah that's some shit now i could flip this story to tell you how if you don't uh how they say nip shit in the bud and how you if you don't stop shit before it amplifies it gets worse all right. Now, in the early days of this relationship, I always tell everyone up front what I do, whatever. I am shimmy. I'm an adult webmaster. I, say, I, I operate porn sites on the internet. I sell movies. I make movies. I do this. I do that. Whatever, whatever. Google me. Look me up. Whatever. There is no sense in this day and age to bullshit people about what you do or what your past is, or what your present, or what your future is, or who you are, or what you own. Because everything is fucking Googleable. You can look up motherfuckers' property records, probably cars and shit by this day and age, criminal records, uh, you know, businesses, anything with your name on it, any company that you've started or I've started, or any dealings, lawsuits, fucking uh, all that shit. Just punch in motherfuckers' name in the computer and see what the fuck's going on. You know? So why are you going to bullshit people? So I was never uh, one of these people that uh, bullshits people. My ex-wife knows that I've, I've been a webmaster for fucking forever, since the 90s or whatever, doing the same shit. Still doing the same shit today, 20 years later, right? So, yeah, I never hid that fact about me or whatever. Now, I was never told how much she, uh, she tells me she hated porn. Hated porn. Like, not just disliked it, but, like, hated it. Which is most interesting, because that's where I derived my income from, which supported me and the family and the kids and all this shit for, I don't know how many years, to present day. <laughs> you know, you hate porn, but it buys your Mercedes Benzes, and it buys your bigger homes with pools and all kinds of furniture and shit or whatever that I don't really give a fuck about. This is the story of the average modern man or whatever. I'm not trying to, like... Uh, you know, make myself like, oh, I did all this, I did I mean, I hear this story repeated all over the internet every fucking day. Just look at Reddit. You know, I'm no different, you know. Dudes, if they got a girl and they care about her, they give her the world and more. They, you know, she asked for the world, you give her the world and the fucking moon or whatever you can provide. You know, if you're into that shit and if you really, uh, you know, the girl really sold you on whatever. Basically. I mean, what the fuck? Can't, you can't do shit half-assed. And I don't, I don't do business relationships or anything half-assed or whatever so it is what it is you know what I mean but I look back and think about god damn how fucking ungrateful or hypocritical can you be 
to hate porn and hate on porn. And, you know, I used to read all of her old comments and shit. She'd be talking shit about the movies. Oh, these bitches is ugly and this and that and this and that. And I'm like, yo, they're paying for the food that's in your fucking fridge, your car, the house, the gas and everything, all the fucking bills, all the, the luxuries, all the air conditioning, all the, <laughs> all the flights, all that bullshit or whatever. It's paid for by the websites, by the girls and the movies and shit that you allegedly hate. That's very hypocritical and disrespectful, actually. So that should have been a red flag to me, too. You know, a porn webmaster with a porn-hating wife. It's is a most interesting thing. But, you know, you flex on the running thing and uh, see where that can lead you up to, you know. I might remind myself, too, that uh, my ex had the help of this book called The Rules by Ellen Fine. There's another fucking episode or show or a couple of them about that shit. I talk about it all the time or whatever. Basically, a girl with a high school education can buy this book and learn how to better manipulate men by these uh, two older fucking crow-looking crow women or whatever who wrote it the shit. And it's a very good uh, psychological manipulation manual or whatever for women or whatever, trying to find, quote-unquote, Mr. Right. So I was Mr. Right or whatever. So anyway, that's, that's my thing, though. If, if the chick doesn't uh, share a hobby or interest or passion or fucking... Zero percent anything at all with you? <laughs> Shit, man. It's, uh, you know, you don't really have an activity partner, I guess. You can still have a wife, you know. You, you know, you and your wife or girlfriend can have fully separate interests and fully separate lives, but, uh, you don't, you're not going to have that activity partner you're looking for. And I think maybe that's what I was looking for all along, you know, and to this day. I don't got the activity partner or whatever. And I figure that uh, I must just be living in the wrong motherfucking zip code. <laughs> but it never fails. You know, I've lived all over the fucking world, all over the country or whatever. The fact of the matter is most girls are not willing to get up at 4, 5, 6, 7 a.m. and go running around their fucking neighborhood or whatever, or mountains, hills, parks, and shit like that. I look on Instagram, all these girls are in motherfucking to do this shit and run in the mountains and shit. They're all in fucking Italy and Spain and fucking, fucking Austria and shit like that. Cold ass countries I'm not really interested in going to at this point. But I may someday. I don't fucking know. We'll see. Might be worth it. I've been everywhere else. But anyway, yeah, man, that's my fucking point there. Uh, if you're looking for a partner, make sure your partner can at least do or fucking understand what you spend one-third or one-quarter of your day doing. <laughs> or you still be doing the same shit alone. All right, so there's more to talk about on this. I'm going to actually split this file and go to another part of the show right now, all right? Pausing right now.